चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले चमक तुझ से पाते हैं सब पाने वाले मेरा I hope and pray that each and every one of you are well. Unfortunately, last month we, I wasn't able to attend for um, some personal reasons. Therefore, we are one month behind schedule. The discussions that we were supposed to have last month, we are having to have them today. We have now got to the point in the prophetic sira, the life and the biography of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which referred to are the hardship years. They are referred to as the hardship years. Uh, we've discussed already the two migrations to Habsha, modern-day Ethiopia. First in the fifth year of prophethood, 15 Sahaba Ikaram under the leadership of Sayyidina Uthman Ibrahim, Dhul Nurayn Allah Ta'ala Anhu. And then the second migration a few months after a larger number of around 101 Sahaba, 83 men and 18 women under the leadership of Sayyidina Ja'far Tayyar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. So this really is the beginning of the uh, hardship period in Makkah al-Mukarramah after the announcement of prophethood. Remember, the first five years are split, in, uh, split into three uh, periods, yes? Uh, three years was secretly inviting the people to Islam. And then the second period within that first five-year period. Uh, do you remember? Second period, Ismail, is it? See, I remember your name. It's been two months. Mm -hmm. No, remember? <coughs> Go back, huh? Go back. Where are we going? Oops, that's too much. Huh? So we have, just to refresh our minds, here we go. The three periods of inviting towards Islam, remember? So the Prophet ﷺ announced his prophethood at the age of 40. Good. We do all remember that, yes? After he announced his prophethood, Nabi Salatu Wasalam for three years secretly invited the people to Islam. That was the first period. Then the second period was when he invited the people of Makkah to Islam at the mountain of Safa, the famous uh, narration where he mentioned that if there was an army behind this mountain, would you believe me? So on and so forth. And then the third period was an open invitation to all. And that's when the period of oppression and torment uh, begins for the polythe uh, from the polytheists of Makkah towards the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. Right? And we looked at the first to accept Islam from amongst the men, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, from amongst the women, Sayyidah Khadijah al-Kubra, radiyallahu ta'ala anha, from amongst the children, the first child to announce his Islam was Sayyidina Ali Murtaza radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And then the first freed slave to announce Islam was Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha. Yes? We've been through this. I'm just refreshing your minds. Then the two migrations which I touched upon. Yes? And then in the sixth year of uh, prophethood, Nabi Salaatu Islam is how old now? 46. Yes? 46. So in the sixth year of prophethood, 
two prominent individuals accept Islam within three days of one another. First, Sayyidina Hamza, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Can anyone from the front two rows, apart from my brother, uh, tell me who is Sayyidina Hamza? Hmm? G. The uncle of the Good. The uncle of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi And also the foster brother of Nabi Islatu Islam. They have the same foster mother. Yes. So Sayyidina Hamza accepts Islam. His uh, story of conversion we have been through. This was the last thing we did uh, two months ago. And then we also touched upon the famous story. And you've got this within your notes. Of when Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Umar Farooq, radiyallahu ta'ala, and who also uh, accepted Islam as well. So this happened in the sixth year of Prophethood. Moving forward, uh, today's discussions are of three main parts. Yes, we're dealing with the number three again. Got around 20, uh, let me check, huh? 27 pages of notes here. I'm not going to go through 27 pages entirely. I'm going to give you the gist of all of this. Yes. It's like a, a mini essay, right? So I'm assuming the cup final is over now. We're getting a few more people walking in. And you'll be happy to hear depending on which team you follow. Man City have won the final. <laughs> Chelsea lose, huh? Chelsea lose. So, then chance you're getting sucked in the morning, huh? Sari, I think, uh, Sari ball is over now. Anyway, to more important things. So the three things that we're going to discuss. First, we're going to discuss the boycott years, which you can see on page one. So the boycott years, the social and economic boycott, which happens against the Prophet ﷺ and his family members and his tribesmen, the Banu Hashim, all those who accepted Islam and the Sahaba Ikram as well. The companions, okay? And then we're going to look at the events leading up to the noble and virtuous night of Al Isra Al Mi'raj. Bil Khusus, the events of the year of grief and sorrow, Am Al Khuzan, and the three events that happened in that year. And then we will look at Al Isra Al Mi'raj, but I'm not going to get too carried away because we will def definitely then be here for a while. But I'm just going to brush over it, yes. Um, and then lastly, we're going to look at the events that led up to and the actual migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the city of his birth, al makkah al-Mukarramah, to the city which was known as Yathrib and became known as, or became al madinah al munawwara right? So quite a lot to get through, quite a lot to get through. Don't worry too much about the notes in front of you, yes? If you're going to follow my lead, then you've got a blank sheet at the back. Just make notes of the key things that I'm going to mention. Be that on the PowerPoint or be that what I'm going to write on the board for you. Okay? This you can do mutalia of later, inshallah, when you're watching the highlights. Yes? Uh, but I am going to also follow that as well. So don't worry, inshallah. All in good hands. Okay? So it's now the seventh year of prophethood. Which year? Seventh year of prophethood. And during this year, the discrimination against the Messenger of Allah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam reaches its peak, its zenith. 
And not only does the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam suffer at the hands of the polytheists and the mushrikeen in Makkah, but also his family members as well, those who support him or supported him and those who accepted Islam. And not only his family members uh, from the tribe, the Banu Hashim, but also his uh, Sahaba, his companions. Yes. So the discrimination reaches its peak, Islamophobia at its peak in the seventh year of prophethood. And it was in the seventh year of prophethood yes, that a boycott was imposed by the leaders of the Quraysh and the Kuffar. This was despite two notable personalities accepting Islam the year before. As I mentioned, his uncle Sayyidina Hamza and three days later Sayyidina Umar. So despite these two notable personalities entering into the folds of Islam and standing shoulder to shoulder with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi this boycott was imposed by the leaders of the Quraysh and the Kuffar. Yes. And there were three, balke four, four main uh, conditions of this boycott. Just write these four down, which is basically condensing everything that's in your notes. Yes? So, seventh year of prophethood. <coughs> Now, Peter Sallallahu Islam now is 47 years old. Social and economic economic boycott. This agreement which was forced upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was written by a man whose name was Mansur, the son of uh, Akram, if I'm not mistaken, yes? Mansur, the son of Akram. And this agreement, which will be summarized in these four points that we're going to mention, was signed by all of the leaders of the Quraysh, Abu Jahl and Utba and Shayba and Walid ibn Mughira and all, all of them, yes? Abu Lahab, the center of all of this. Like you can see at the bottom of page one. Right at the bottom of page one. Can you see bottom of page one? Where it says, whenever a Muslim would go to a salesman in order to purchase some food for his family, it would be common for Abu Lahab to stand by the goods and to shout out. The salesman raised the prices for Muhammad وسلم, and his followers so that they are unable to buy anything from you. Do not worry, I am a rich man and I am a man of my word. I shall compensate your losses. Dushmani ki intiha, this boycott. And this boycott, before I forget, took place in the valley of Abu Talib. The Valley of Abu Talib. Are we following? So the boycott was against who? What's wrong? Your favorite team was Chelsea? You said they lost? Usually you're on the ball? Huh? Two month break and the bus. Sardina Gigi, huh? Ismail? So I will pick on somebody else. Teri Chutti. Huh? Who was the boycott against? Young man with the glasses in the middle there. What's your name? Hamza. Hamza. Who was the boycott against? The Prophet ﷺ, right? The Prophet ﷺ. Come on, let's follow. The Prophet ﷺ and his family and his companions. Okay? Four key points to this boycott or aspects. Number one, none shall intermarry. None shall intermarry. Yani none shall intermarry into 
the family of the Prophet ﷺ, none shall intermarry with the Banu Hashim or any of the companions. Yes. Number two, no business dealings. No business dealings. So none shall conduct any business dealings with them. This was written down by this man here. And this agreement was pinned on the door of the Kaqba. So it's on the inside wall of the Kaqba. Okay. Number three, all social, uh, all social conduct will cease. Yes. Obviously, we're not talking Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram here. Yeah. Yes, 1400 years ago, yes, there was no Facebook or YouTube or Snapchat. Yes? But when they say social conduct, meaning no one will converse with them. No one will interact with them. Complete, complete uh, isolation. Cut off. And number four, probably the most Severest of the conditions, yes. No drink or morsel of food shall be provided to them. Yes. No food or drink. And the Prophet ﷺ and his family members and his followers, his Sahaba, they stayed in this valley for three years. The valley of Abu Talib. And the situation reached breaking point on many occasions. Yes. The severity of the situation was such that they had to eat and boil, boil and eat leaves in order to survive. Children would cry themselves to sleep in hunger. Yes. And what the mushrikeen in Mecca would do to ensure that food wasn't being supplied to them, they would post guards upon each uh, entrance into the valley. Okay. So for three consecutive years, the Prophet Sallallahu endured this immorality. After three years, some of the Quraysh who were soft-hearted, they began a petition. From amongst them, there was an individual by the name of Zuhair, who was actually the grandson of Sayyidina Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala. And he says, Oh people, where is the fairness in us eating until our stomachs are full, while the innocent children of the Banu Hashim cry in hunger and thirst? So he spearheads this petition against this boycott and he wants the boycott to stop and it was Abu Jahl who said no don't touch this agreement yes. confrontations between the leaders of the Quraysh they are at uh, disagreements as well Then one day, the Prophet ﷺ informs his uncle Abu Talib, the father of Sayyidina Ali Murtaza, that, oh my uncle, oh my uncle, go and inform the Quraysh that this agreement that they've written, this agreement that they've written, this agreement has been eaten by worms. Except wherever the name of Allah appears in that agreement. Abu Talib comes to the leaders of the Quraysh and Abu Talib says to them that my nephew has told me to inform you that go look at this agreement. Where was this agreement placed? On the Kaaba, be it the door, be it the inside wall. Allah knows best, right? So Abu Talib says that my nephew has told me to tell you that this agreement has been eaten by worms. Except for the words of Allah. Yes. 
This you will find on page three now. Yes, top of the page. Except for the word, Bismik Allahumma, in the name of, uh, in your name, O oh Allah. So when the Quraysh heard this, they went to see, and they found that Abu Talib was telling the truth. That the agreement has been eaten by a worm or a maggot, something like this, right? The Quraysh saw this, and a few young, valiant individuals of the Quraysh, they were sent to the valley, and they brought each member of the Banu Hashim back to their homes in complete safety. After three years, this boycott is lifted. This boycott is lifted. Okay. And ultimately, this individual who wrote the agreement, what was his name again? Mansur ibn Akram. Allah's retribution against him was that his hand was paralyzed. His hand with which he wrote the agreement, this hand was paralyzed and he was unable to use this hand uh, until his death. So this is the punishment of, for those who go against the Prophet This is the punishment. Okay. Just after the boycott ended, page 4, we can see that one of the famous miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu took place. What does it say? Shakul Amar. Iqtarabati sa'atu wan shakal Amar. Full surah. Surah Al-Qamar. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala makes mentioning, that makes mention of this miracle, the splitting of the moon in the Qur'an. Therefore, someone who denies that this, someone says that this miracle didn't take place, huh? it didn't take place, then that person is denying Nasul Quran. If you reject Nasul Quran, you are outside the folds of Islam. Okay? So we know that the Prophet وسلم, the Prophet وسلم, ultimately was asked by the Mushrikeen in Makkah. To witness a miracle. And they all were in agreement that they wanted to see the moon split into two. So Nabi Wasalam pointed with his right index finger towards the moon and the moon split into two. And one half of the moon on one side of the mountain of Abu Qubais and the other half of the moon on the other side of the mountain. Yes. Or ye, uh, this is not just a, a miracle here, that's half the miracle. The other half of the miracle was what? And Nabi Rishnah was also responsible for putting the moon back together again. The very same moon that he played with whilst in the cradle. Uh, under the care, when he was under the care of Sayyidah Halima Sa'diya radiyallahu ta'ala and Ghaliban it was around 15 20 years ago, NASA scientists uh, they did some research and they saw a crack in the moon uh, they saw a crack in the moon so the conclusion they drew was that this crack in the moon was caused by the greatest Man to have walked the face of the earth. This is what the non-Muslims even agree upon. Michael Hart, top 500 influential people in the history of mankind. And who does he put number one? Our beloved Prophet Yes. Just a side point here. Nabi Salatu Islam's mu'jizat, aside from those mu'jizat and miracles. Yes, this is a couple of points we'll mention here. Yes. A miracle is known as a, if a prophet performs a miracle, mu'jizah. 
Mu'jizat. One miracle. And if you want to say three or more, Mu'jizat. Mu'jizat. So when he performs a miracle that's known as a karama. Or three or more, karamat. Yes. With Nabi Salatu Islam's mu'jizat, there are two categories, two types. This is something additional, make note of it. Okay? Nabi Salatu Islam's miracles. Yes. An extraordinary blessing is known as a miracle, which goes against the norm, something supernatural. So Nabi Salatu Islam's miracles are of two types. The first set of miracles, and this is relevant to our discussion today. The first set of miracles are those miracles and mu'jizat which were not in the control of the Prophet Like Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. Yes, the greatest miracle. Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. Like the journey of Al-Isra of Al-Mi'raj. Relevant to our discussion today. Out of the control of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as we will discuss, resting in the Hatim, Jibreel is sent, awakens the Prophet Sallallahu and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi makes this journey from Masjid Al-Haram to Masjid Al-Aqsa, and then from Masjid Al-Aqsa through the seven heavens, past Sidrat Al-Muntaha, until eventually he enters the court of Allah Almighty. Yeah, so this is out of the control of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And then the second set of miracles are what? Those which are in the control of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Like the... Uh, Splitting of the moon into two, and many other famous mu'jizat and miracles. Yes, like the greeting of the trees. Say, the Ali Murtaza says that in Makkah to Mukarramah, I was with the Prophet We went towards some suburbs of Makkah. On the way, each and every tree. Uh, that came before the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It would say, "Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah." Inanimate objects giving salam to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. Then the greetings of stone, the, gre the greetings of a stone. That uh, Sayyidina Jabir ibn Samura says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "I still clearly remember, even today." That very stone in Makkah which used to greet me with peace before the announcement of prophethood. Yeah, Sahih, Muslim Sharif Kiribayat. And many other miracles like this as well. Yes, the flowing of water from the fingers of the Prophet which we'll do uh, when we look at the Surah uh, Daybija and Nabi Salatu Islam falling of rain from the sky, the crying of a, of a trunk, of a date palm. The increasing of food, yes, uh, and like this, the appearance of light at the time of his blessed birth, so on and so forth. Many miracles he mentioned, okay. So there are of two types. There are of two types. But ultimately, this is a jumla worth listening to. Uh, prophets all came with miracles given by Allah. Prophets uh, from Adam al Islam to Isa uh, al-Islam, all came with miracles given by Allah. Our Prophet came as a miracle sent by Allah. Subhanallah. Our Prophet came as a miracle sent by Allah. Uh, this is why Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Rabaha said, after he accepted Islam, that if the Prophet wasallam didn't come with any proof, no Qur'an, no proof, no Dali. We would have still accepted that he was the Prophet of Allah by the beauty on his wadduha jera. That his face cannot be the face of a liar. Such was the beauty of the Prophet This is a discussion in itself. Yes. Lama Qurtubi mentioned 70,000 veils. 70,000 veils and hijabat were upon the external beauty of the Prophet. 
Sahaba just saw a mere reflection. Gal us taraf chali gaya. Ye asal mein is my mauzu next week in London. Mashallah wa asi karni. Ilfat. Yes. The noble features of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Reality is that when the women of Misr, you've heard this jumla many a time. Zok ke liye, na? Zok aur iman taza karne ke liye. That when the women of Misr saw the beauty of Yusuf al Islam, what did they do? Without realizing, they cut their fingers. Say, and they cut their fingers. Say the Aisha says that if Allah allowed for the women of Mecca to see just one cheek of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the women of Mecca wouldn't have cut their fingers; they would have cut their hearts into pieces. Such was the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nabi sallam, from their blessed head to their blessed toes, is a miracle sent by Allah Taala. <coughs> So this happens, Shakul Qamar happens straight after. Some accepted, some rejected. Those who rejected called him uh, a magician. And those who accepted, Alhamdulillah, their Iman became even stronger. Okay, their Iman became even stronger. Moving on, then we have the 10th year of prophethood. How old is the Prophet now? 50 years old, yes. Tenth year of prophethood, as you can see on the board in front of you, bottom of page four in your notes as well. This is referred to as the year of grief and sorrow. Amul Huzal. Amul in Arabic is the year or the name for year. Like we are Amul Fil, the year of the elephant, which is the year of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu This year is referred to by the historians, those who have written books on Sira, as Amul Huzal. Huzal means grief. لا تحزن إلا الله معنا. Do not grieve. Allah is with us. Yes. So same word here. Huzan. So عام الهزن. Okay. So just after the boycott was lifted, Nabi Nisratu Salam's uncle Janabi Abu Talib becomes ill for around eight months. How many months? Eight. Eight months. And eventually he passes away. Abu Talib passes away. Okay. And to confirm this, Abu Talib, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi uncle, passes away in the month of Ramadan. Yes. Because a few days after in one narration, three days after, in another narration, five days after, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi blessed wife, Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, and at that time, the only blessed wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Zawja Muhtarama, Sayyida Qayyiba Tahira, Khatija Tulkubra radiyallahu ta'ala, she also passes away. Yes. And we know Sayyida Khatija left his dunya in the month of Ramadan, yes, like Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra, like Sayyidina Ali Murtaza. So Janabi Abu Talib, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uncle also left this dunya in the month of Ramadan. Thank you. Dusrikal, what's our position in relation to uh, Iman Abu Talib? Huh? I'm not going to go into the ins and outs. I just the bariya bariya kitaba or bare bare is trikna takrira to prove the iman of Sayyidina Abu Talib. Yes. Our asatis have always said that uh, when you refer to the uncle of the Prophet وسلم, our teachers have always said that refer to him uh, with honor. And just out of precaution to be on the safe side, either said Janabi Abu Talib or Sayyidina Abu Talib. Yes. What is the correct opinion? Whether you look at Al Fiqh Al Akbar of Imam Abu Hanifa, or whether you look at what the ulama have written over the last 1400 years, the correct position is this that Janabi Abu Talib will 
suffer from the lowest punishment in the hellfire. And what is the lowest punishment in the hellfire? Hmm? Shoes that will be made out of fire. Yes. And ultimately, most of the ulama agree that yes, maybe within his heart he accepted, but he didn't do iqrar of this. And the ta'rif of iman is what? Iqrarun bil lisan wa tasdiqun bil qalb. So let's say bil farz he did tasdiqun bil qalb. He didn't do iqrar. Why? Because he couldn't leave the way of his ancestors. So he did let's say for argument say tasdiqun bil qalb. But he didn't do iqrarun bil lisan. Yes. So ultimately, our position is, or ye bi yad rakho, it's one of them gray areas. You will never be questioned about this by Allah Almighty. There are certain things that you won't be questioned on, like matters in relation to the ruh, the soul, like this. These type of issues, it's best if. It's left as it is. But uh, you can see there, bottom of page 4, that the Prophet ﷺ would insist his uncle to accept Islam. And on each occasion, Abu Talib, Janabi Abu Talib would reply that I know you speak the truth, but if I accept, even the women of Quraysh would condemn me. Yes. Yes, there are many fadail. Uh, Janabi Abu Talib look after the Prophet Sallallahu for what age? Just to be before that. Eight. Huh? Right, by right, huh? Mashallah. From the age of eight. Now up until the age of 50, how many years is that? Huh? 42 years he took care of the Prophet Sallallahu Nurtured the Prophet Sallallahu provided for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was a means of uh, support for the Prophet Sallallahu especially in these difficult and testing times, this period of hardship in Makkah al Mukarramah, this period of torture and oppression. Sayyidina Abu Talib, no doubt, was a pillar of support and strength for the Prophet Sallallahu Yes. And then he uh, read the nikah of Rasul Akram sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidah Khadijah al-Kubra. You've done this in Sira as well. Nabi Islam was 25. Sayyidah Khadijah 40. Who did the nikah? Janabi Abu Talib. Who prov provided the dowry? Janabi Abu Talib. Yes. But again, it's one of them. Uh, Allah knows. Allah and his Rasul know best. Allah is, and his Rasul know best. But uh, a few days later, a few days later, Sayyida Tayyiba Tahira Khatija Tul Kubra Rati Allah Ta'ala Anha They passed away. Yes. At the age of 65 now. Sayyida Khatija is how old? 65 years old. Nabi Nisratul Islam is 15 years the junior of Sayyida Khatija. And I mentioned this to you two months ago or three months ago whenever we discussed it. That Nabi Nisratul Islam had how many children in total? G? Seven. How was your name, Yunna? Muhammad, yeah. the best of names. Huh? Seven children. Out of them, seven children, six of them children, Nabi Salatu Islam had with Sayyidah Khatija Kubra. Two sons, four daughters. Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Umm Kulthum, Sayyidah Rutayya, and Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala. And Hunna, and Sayyidah Qasim, and Sayyidah Abdullah from the sons. Yes. So Sayyidah Khatija's maqam wa martaba. Allah, but Wara'ul Bara. Yes, Wara'ul Bara. Okay. And today they are resting in Jannatul Ma'la. Some pronounce this as Jannatul Mu'alla in Makkatul Mukarram. Okay. So within a few days of one another, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala loses two pillars of support and strength. Difficulties after difficulties, hardships after hardships. Allah is 
No doubt testing his beloved. And no doubt glad tidings is upon those who are patient. Some might argue that no doubt we say our Lajpal Nabi Karim Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. If he wanted, he could have turned the mountains into gold. Angels shaded him from the heat of the sun. So why did he go? Why did he go through so much difficulties? Why did he endure so many hardships? And the lesson is for us as his ummatis that we will go through difficulties, we will go through hardships. Therefore, when we go through difficulties and hardships, rather than uh, folding up and saying that's it, go bus, uh, or is trikinal, start going into a state of anxiety and despair, and your iman becomes weak, no. I remember Qibla Ustaz Sab, Qibla Prizal Sab, Mufassir Quran, they will often tell us that when you are going through difficulties and hardships, uh, study the life and the seerah of the Prophet Go through his biography, go through his blessed life, and going through his seerah and his biography will become a means of comfort for you. A means of uh, comfort for you, a means of support. By going through the seerah of the Prophet this should make us strong in our iman as well. This should increase us in our love for the Prophet For indeed to know him is to love him. Yes, to know him is to love him. So say the Khatita to Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. Yes. They passed away a few days after Janabi Abu Talib. And no doubt she is the noblest of all the women. Say the Maryam, say the Asiya. Uh, Sayyidina Fatima to Zahra, Sayyidina Khadija to Kubra, Sayyidina Amina. These are the creme de la creme from amongst the Nisa, the Nisa, Minan Nisa, yeah, from amongst the women. Okay. Then the third incident to take place in this year of grief and sorrow, Abdul Salatu Islam is 50 years old, is the journey to five, page six. The journey to okay. so After the great uh, rebellion and the difficulties and hardship that Nabi Salatu Islam experienced through the Mushrikeen in Makkah, Nabi Salatu Islam began to turn his attention towards areas near to Makkah to spread the deen. Okay. So Nabi Salatu Islam accompanied with the Ghulam, Sayyidina Zayd bin Haritha, they went to this place called Qaif, which was around 120 kilometers away from Makkah. I remember we made this journey around four years ago, yes, with the Sadat when we went for Umrah. And Nabi Salatu Islam, in that day and age, no cars and no air conditioning, they ultimately arrived there. And in Taif, uh, there was the family of Umair, the family of Umair, who led all the tribes that were living there. Uh, three brothers, Habib and Mas'ud, and uh, another brother, uh, Abdi Yalayl was his name. And Abid Islam Islam visited them, uh, invited them to Islam. But how did they respond? They responded by refusing the invitation of the Prophet and they insulted him and they slandered him and they ordered their young children to throw stones at the Prophet Yes, and the effects were such, the injury which was caused led to the blessed feet of the Prophet being soaked with his own blood and in the Islam shoes and his, his blessed sandals Nahlain, his footwear was soaked in his own blood. And Sayyidina Zaid bin Haritha tried to prevent them uh, from throwing stones, stood in front of the Prophet Sallallahu But these individuals bombarded Nabi Salatu Islam and he was drenched in his own blessed blood. Yes. And eventually they sought refuge in a garden of grapes which was owned by one of the mushrikeen in Makkah, ironically. Utbah ibn Rabiya. Yes. And it was here where the Prophet وسلم, bottom of page 6, met an individual who was a follower of 
the previous religions. Adas was his name. Adas. And he serves the Prophet Sallallahu just before he's about to eat uh, what was served to him. He says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And Adas, or Adas, both pronunciations. Uh, he goes, that no one from these areas uses these words. You must be from a different area, a foreign land. And Nabi Salatu Islam said to him that, where are you from? And he goes, Nainwa. And Nabi Salatu Islam said, my brother Yunus, Yunus alayhi salam, he is also from this city. And he is a prophet just as I am a prophet. Upon hearing this, Adas, he kisses the blessed hands and the feet of the Prophet Subhan. How blessed and fortunate was that individual. And immediately, he recites the kalima and he becomes a Muslim. Yes. So through difficulty and hardship there comes ease. Twice uh, Allah mentions this in the Quran. So today we become upset if people don't come to our lectures. Uh, today we become upset if people don't come to the gatherings that are arranged by the masjid. Uh, we become upset when people don't uh, listen to us. Be that our own children even, our own spouse. But here there is a lesson for us all. The perseverance uh, pays dividends. Jumlatika. Perseverance pays dividends. And no doubt, uh, as we go through the Sira, you will see this. Difficulties upon difficulties, hardships upon hardships. But ultimately Allah rewards His beloved. Be that by the blessed and miraculous night journey which we refer to as Al-Isra'u wal miraj or be that through Fateh Makkah, or be that through Hajjatul Wada. In different ways, Allah rewards His beloved for the patience and the forbearance and the perseverance that He, uh, he endured and He showed. Yes. When we go through these difficulties, we should also take comfort and solace from the life and the seerah of the Prophet <coughs> And the next particular incident everyone is aware of, yes, that Jibreel comes to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam and Jibreel says that the angel of the mountains is present to serve you, Ya Rasulullah. If you wish and on your command, uh, the city of Taif will be crushed between the two mountains. And what does the Prophet say? Nabi Islam says that no, I am in hope that people will appear from their descendants who will worship Allah alone and not others. Yes. And who came from the descendants of the people of life? Anyone? Muhammad bin Qasim. Who is Muhammad bin Qasim? Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. He is that individual who conquered the province of Sindh. Yes. This is before the split in 1947. Well before. Yes. At the age of 16, 17 if I'm not mistaken. Muhammad bin Qasim who, was a, who is a descender from the people of Qaif. Look at the firasat of the Prophet sallallahu The descendant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi His ilmul ghayb. Don't crush this city of Taif. Maybe from their descendants someone will come who will worship Allah alone. Now, many came from amongst them. There was Muhammad bin Qasim. And Muhammad bin Qasim conquered the province of Sin, which is in Barisagir, Hindustan. So Islam came into that land that we originate from through the mercy of Rasulullah Through Muhammad bin Qasim. Today we are Muslims because of this act of mercy which the Prophet ﷺ showed and demonstrated when he didn't give the command for the city of life to be destroyed. Very bad something, you know. Go back and do research on this. Muhammad bin Qasim is the name. Yes. There are some names which stand out in history. Not just the history of Islam, but the history of mankind. 
And no doubt Muhammad bin Qasim is one of them names. One of them names. And this is all through uh, the mercy and the rahmat al alamini of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayka wa sallam. Yes. So this is what happens at Taif. Okay. So all of this on page 7 as well. This now leads us up to the point in the seerah where the miraculous night journey takes place. Yes, the miraculous night journey. The journey that we refer to as Al Isra'u Wal Mi'raj. Okay, I'm going to change my PowerPoints as well now. I'm just going to. Oh. Just use my Al Isra Wal Mi'raj PowerPoint. Yes. This is a lecture in itself. Inshallah, one day in its entirety. Barha, the night journey and the ascent. Make notes on this. Good notes. Yes. No more drawing. Notes now. Yes. Background knowledge we're already aware of. The event took place in the 12th year of prophethood. One year before migration, in the month of Rajab, which is Islamically now next month, yes, today Ghaliban is the 20th of Jamaat uh, al next month is Rajab, so preparing us for that month, the 7th month of the Islamic calendar, 27th of Rajab, and this journey, night journey, Details of it in your notes, but I'm just going to uh, break it down for you and give you a better and more clearer understanding. The first part of the journey from Al Masjid Al Haram in Makkah Al Mukarramah to Al Masjid Al Aqsa in Al Quds Al Sharif, Jerusalem. This first part of the journey is referred to as Al Isra. Yes, Al Isra. And Allah Taala mentions this first part of the journey in Surah Bani Israel, the ayat that I recited right at the beginning. Yes, famous verse: Subhanallahi asra bi abdihi, layla min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. Inna hu wa sami al basir. Yeah, na fasa. That's Surah number 17, verse number 1, Surah Al-Isra, just by way of reference. So, the important thing to understand from that, or from this, is that as soon as Allah mentions this in the Qur'an, no doubt, it becomes Qat'i. The knowledge in the Qur'an is what? Got my aim here. Qat'i. Any definitive. So anyone who denies this night journey or says that this was a dream, we're going to come to that. Yes, that person needs a bit of a reality check. Subhanallah, the asra bi abdihi layla min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa. So this first part is referred to as al isra. Hence the surah is also referred to as surah al isra. Or surah bani Israel is another name for it. Isra means journey, journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, and that journey in that day and age would take around one month. One month there, one month back. But the Prophet sallallahu made this journey in a small part of the night, Layla. Yes. The second part of the journey is Al Mi'raj. And we're going to go into the finer details of this. I'm just giving you an overview. And Al-Mi'raj is from the furthest masjid, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, through the heavenly world. The seven heavens and who they met in the seven heavens and all that we're going to go through. Don't worry. Yes. Aj, maybe I might need extra time of penalty shootout as well. Huh? 
but I've still got 17 minutes of normal time. Okay. This uh, is referred to as al mi'raj, uh, ascension. And then the third part, this might be new for some of you. Yes? This third part of the journey when the Prophet ﷺ went past Sidratul Muntaha, the furthest limit, the furthest boundary, and entered into the court of Allah. This part of the journey is referred to as Al Iraj. Al Iraj. Yes. Or Maqaida. This term Al Iraj has been coined by Khwaja Gharib Nawaz himself, Sultan al Hind, Naibi Rasul, Ata'un Nabi. Khwaja Khwaja Khan. Okay. And the events of Al Mi'raj and Al I'raj are mentioned in Surah Al Najm. Surah Al Najm. Yes. So Mi'raj and I'raj. I mentioned in Surah Al Najm, which is the 53rd chapter of the Quran. Mada al Basaru wa ma baga, thumma dana fatadalla fakana qaba kausayni au adna fa auha ila abdihi ma auha. Okay. Bara. And over 30 companions have mentioned this miraculous night journey. And so many lessons can be learned from this. Like I said, Bakat doesn't to permit to go through every single aspect of it. But inshallah, I'll try to do the best I can in the time that we have. Okay? So just to put this miraculous night journey into context, some of it is in your notes. Some of it I'm going to mention as we go along. Make notes of what is on the PowerPoint as well. So here, huh? Nabi Islam is resting in the Hatim. Yes, the semicircle of the Kaaba. Or here we are, Nabi Islam resting is not like our resting. Nabi Islam himself said, in Bukhari Sharif ki alfaz, that my eyes are closed but my heart is awake. He's not like you and me. And this night journey will prove this. He's not like you and me. These people who go around, Hamare jase hain ji, Hamare jase hain nahi. Nabi Islam Islam is not like you and me. Yes. And Jibreel arrives and awakes the Prophet ﷺ from his sleep. Ulema Ikram mentioned. He does this in a very unique way. Yes. Allah doesn't tell Jibreel to do this. But Jibreel has this mahabbat and this love for the Prophet that rather than Jibreel waking the Prophet like we wake one another up, huh? when mom wakes us up for school in the morning, think how she wakes you up. Huh? Or dad wakes you for fajr in the morning, think how he wakes you up. Now, here Jibreel uses a very unique way of waking the Prophet up. He huh? kisses the blessed Qadamain Sharifain of Rasulullah he kisses the blessed Qadamain Sharifain of Rasulullah This is how he uh, awakens the Prophet ﷺ from their sleep, from their resting. Okay. And Jibreel then takes the Prophet ﷺ towards the well of Zamzam. This is now the fourth Shakke uh, Shakke Sada. Uh, not Shakke Kama. Shakke Sada. Remember? We had three prior to this. Remind me very quickly. First one was when? G. First time Nabi Islam, blessed heart, was washed in Zamzam water and chest was open and expanded. Ji, huh, childhood, you're right, don't be shy. When they were in when? Whose care and protection? <laughs> Say the Halima Sa'diya, they were around two, three years old, remember? Second time was when? Again in childhood, but be specific. 
Good, Muhammad. Yes. When they were in the care of Sayyidina Abu Talib, Janabi Abu Talib, they were how old? Eight. They said ten years old, yes? He came into care at the age of eight. Are you laughing at all? You got it wrong? You think Bas, you're going to get promoted again? No, Bas, championship now. Uh, your championship. Anyway, uh, so age of 10. Age of 12, which we were referring to, is when they met the Christian monk, Bahira. Yes, so keep these things in mind. Third time was when? In which cave? Okay, well, here are, at the age of 14. <coughs> at the inception of Revelation. At the beginning of it. And now this is the fourth time. At the age of 52. Just before uh, the year of migration. Okay. And an animal is brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Okay. The name of this animal is Burak. What's the animal called? Burak. Burak. Okay. Burak comes from the word Bark. Uh, Barqun is the Arabic word for lightning. And here they mention, yes, that Utitu bil Buraki, Fahua Dabatun, Abiya Butawilun, Fauka Himari, Wadun al Bagli. Yes. And this Abu Salam said, The Burak was brought to me. And this Burak. Uh, its speed was such that the distance to which it could see, that is where it would place its hoof, at its speed. And it was a white animal, somewhat taller than a donkey, but smaller than a mule. Some say a unicorn. No, this is a heavenly creature. And the Burak is made from what? Well, everything in heaven is made from? Noor, light. So the Burak is made from light. The one who brought the Burak, who is who? <laughs> Jibreel and on the Burak of the angels. Yes, they are also made from light. Burak made from light, Jibreel made from light, Malaika made from light. Therefore only light can go upon light. Only Nur can go upon Nur. So today those who have Jagra and those who have this dispute, or he hamare jaise hai, bashar hai, bashar hai, and he can't be Nur. Then tell me, science tells me you and me today that only light can go upon light. Only light can go upon light. So Burak is made from light, Jibreel is made from light, the one who holds the reins of the Burak, and no doubt the one who sits upon the Burak, he is also made from light as well. Scient logically, it's impossible for us to suggest anything other than this. Okay? The Burak is brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala yes. And as I was mentioning earlier, that this journey that took place was a journey, make a note of this, where both body and soul, body and spirit were present. Here they mention uh, that Mullah Ahmad Jeevan in the Tafsirat Ahmadiyya, they write, وَالْأَصَحُّ أَنَّهُ كَانَ فِي الْيَقْزَةِ بِجَسَدِهِ مَعَ رُوحِهِ وَعَلَيْهِ أَهْلِ سُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَعَةِ Yes, that the correct belief regarding the mi'raj, the ascension, and this journey that took place, is that it occurred whilst the Prophet ﷺ was conscious, and this occurred whilst he was physically present, with both his body and his soul. Yes. And this is the belief of the Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And then they give a verdict. They go, فَمَنْ قَالَ إِنَّهُ بِرُوحٍ فَقَطْ أَوْ فِي النَّوْمِ If someone says that only uh, the spirit was present, or this was a dream, then that individual is astray. فَمُبْتَدِئُنْ ضَالٌ مُدِلٌ فَاسِقٌ and not only is that person astray, but he is misguided. And he is misguiding others as well. And he is an open sinner. The one who says that this was a dream, Allah, Or this was a spirit only, soul only. Body wasn't present. No, body is also present. Soul is more Jew than present. And this wasn't a dream, this was a reality. Huh? 
Mazar al Basar wa Matoga. Nabi Salatu Salam saw with his physical eyes. Yes, saw with his physical eyes. The majesty of Allah Almighty. And then the further evidence of this is what? Allah uses the word bi'abdihi in the Quran. Subhanallahi asra bi'abdihi. And lafzi abd, uh, which means servant, is incumbent of two aspects and components. One is jasad and the other is ruh. So Allah using the word abd has divine wisdom in it as well. Uh, divine wisdom within it as well. Uh, Subhanallahi uh, Asra bi rasulihi he could have said, Jalla wa ala. Or bi nabihi he could have said, but no. Allah says, Subhanallah di asra bi abdihi. To remove this doubt from your mind. And it wasn't a dream, it wasn't just by spirit and soul. Both uh, body and soul were present in this miraculous night journey. Okay. So, ye galt guman or galt femi hai. That some exotic speakers and preachers will uh, put across to the public and awam. No. Body and spirit. This is a point of Aqidah, hence why I'm emphasizing it. Marhal. On the way to Al Masjid al Aqsa, three things happen, three events. Make note of this. Nabi Rasulullah Islam offered two units of prayer in the land of the date palms, which is the land which was going to be known as Al Madinatul Munawwara. Again, linked to our discussion, which inshallah, hopefully, we'll touch upon. Yes. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi offered two units of prayer in Bethlehem. And Bethlehem is the birthplace of which Prophet? Prophet Isa. So, acknowledging the places of birth of a Nabi is Sunnati Rasul. Is it permissible? Isn't it permissible? Magara, magara. What are you going to do with these type of narrations? Huh? And then number three, a point of etiqad. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi passed by Marattu bi Qabri Musa. Yes, in Jericho, near the Dead Sea, you have the resting place of Musa Alayhi Salam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Marattu bi Qabri Musa. I passed by the grave of Musa Alayhi Salam. Wa huwa qa'imun. And Musa Alayhi Salam was standing. You Yusalli fi qabrihi And not only was he standing, he was also praying in his grave. Yes, Sahih Muslim Sharif ki rivayat. Sahih Muslim Sharif ki rivayat. Hadith number 6306. Sahih rivayat. Which tells us what? Two things here. Like I said, time doesn't permit to open all of the discussion. But two things. And aqidah pukhta karo. First thing is this, that this proves that the prophets are... Alive in their blessed place. Today again, those exotic speakers and preachers and the average public who go around Ma'adalda propagating this false aqidah that the prophets are dead, don't ask them. Their bodies and their, uh, their uh, adsad have been mixed with the soil of the earth. Ma'adalda ye batil aqidah hai. Anbiya mursaleen are alive in their graves. And this is one from the many proofs and evidences in relation to the prophets being alive in their graves. And no doubt if Musa is alive in his grave, and Musa is salam, Karimullah came, come up page 2000 years before the Prophet And if on this night Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi saw Musa is salam, and Musa is is quite central to this whole discussion, as we will see, if Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi saw Musa is salam alive in his grave, and not only alive, he was standing, and standing is something you can only do by way of jism. Yes, you can't say that the soul was standing or that the spirit was standing and then what? Not only standing, you solely feel qabrihi. He was praying in the grave. Ruku and qiyam and qawma and sajda and tashahud. Yes. So this again is further evidence that the prophets are not just alive by way of spirit or soul in their graves, but they are alive by way of ansad and their bodies as well in the grave. And if Musa is alive in his blessed grave, then today the Imam of Musa is also alive in his grave as well. And Allah has not give us our Aqidah. Tu zinda hai Allah, tu zinda hai Allah. Mere chashmi alam se chup jane wa. Yes. Number one. Number two, Nabi Islam saw Musa alayhi salam. Yehi kalam. 
He didn't stand there. He didn't, Burak didn't stop there. Nabi Islam Islam was upon the Burak. Jibreel is holding the reins of the Burak. Yes, to the best of our understanding. And Nabi Islam Islam was on the Burak, which is traveling faster than the speed of? Light. Yes. If you know what the speed of light is, then you'll have a further understanding of this. Yes, I would Google it, but uh, huh? somebody Googles it. Huh? The speed of light. Nabi Islam Islam is traveling faster than the speed of light. And Nabi Islam Islam sees that it's the Prophet Musa, not the Prophet Isa. Or the Pro well, it can't be the Prophet Isa, they are raised to the heavens. Uh, it's the Prophet Ibrahim, or the Prophet Yahya, or the Prophet Yaqub, yes? Nabi Islam Islam knows it's Musa Islam. Or Yevi Lutfki Bad hai, that Nabi Islam Islam not only saw this, but he came back and told the Sahaba. Rabi is Sayyidina Anas bin Malik, hadith 6306 in Sahih Muslim Sharif. Kitab al Fadail me hai. Yes. So Nabi Islam Islam came back and told the Sahaba as well. So this tells us that the strength of the sight of the Prophet is more stronger than the speed of light. Uh, that he was able to see it was Musa in the grave alayhi salam and that Musa was standing and Musa was praying and not only was he able to see this but he came back and told all of the companions as well that I saw Musa in his grave and he was standing and he was praying which tells us and, and gives us this understanding and gives us our aqidah that the kubat of the eyesight the strength of the blessed eyesight of the Prophet ﷺ is more stronger than the speed of light. Then they arrive in Masjid al-Aqsa. Nabi Islam leaves the Anbiya and Mursali in the Surah. These are uh, the details that we are all familiar with. 124,000 Prophets are gathered. From Sayyidina Adam to Sayyidina Isa Islam, each and every one of them worthy to stand on the Musalla. No doubt the creme de la creme of Allah Almighty's creation. But it's Jibreel who takes the hand of Huzu Jani Jana Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Nabi Islam to Islam becomes Imam al Anbiya Iwal Mursali. He stands on the Musalla. He becomes the Imam and the Prophets become the Muqtadi. Huh? Nabi Islam to Islam becomes Muqtada. Imam is referred to as Muqtada. Uh, and the one who follows will refer to as Muqtadi. Yes. And then after that, uh, the Prophets one by one, they deliver their khutbas. Adi Iyad Rahmatullah does knuckle of this here. Page 118 in the Ashifa Sharif. Very quickly, just to give you some understanding, that even on this night, Nabi Islam didn't forget his Ummah. This was his special night. This was a night where he met his beloved. Huh? And even on this night, he didn't forget you and me. فَقَالَ فَإِنَّ مُحَمَّدًا huh? The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam He began by praising Allah Almighty Jalla Wa'ala Yes? He began by praising Allah Almighty أُثْنَ عَلَى رَبِّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فَقَالَ كُلُّكُمْ أُثْنَ عَلَى رَبِّهِ وَأَنَا أُثْنَ عَلَى رَبِّي أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ هِلَّذِي Arsalani rahmatan lil adameen. That all praise be to Allah who has sent me as a mercy to all of mankind, to all of the worlds. Wakafatan lil nasi bashiram wa nadira. And he has, he has sent me, he has sent me uh, as a bashir and as a nadir. Bashir kamana, the giver of glad tidings. Nadir kamana, the warner. Wa anzala alayya al furqana. And that uh, praise be to Allah, He has revealed upon me Al Furqan, which is another name for Al Quran. Fihi tibiyanu kulli shayin. And in that Furqan uh, is the knowledge of everything. Zalik al Kitabu la reba. Wa jala ummati. And all praise be to Allah that He made my ummah khayra ummatin, the best of nations. Uh, like Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ali Imran. Kuntu khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah Even on this night he doesn't forget you and me Lajma'al Nabi Kareem Rasul wa ja'ala ummati ummatan wasafa and that he has made my nation the middle nation the nation of moderation the nation of equilibrium 
the nation of balance. وَجَعَلَ أُمَّتِيهُمْ هُمُ الْأَوَّلُونَ وَهُمُ الْآخِرُونَ is كَمَا نَكَانَ that he's made my nation the first and the last. The first who will enter paradise. The last from the nations to be set on the earth. And because Nabi Salatu Islam is the last of the prophets. Yes, Nabi Salatu Islam is the last of the prophets. Take care. And then they continue. وَشَحَرَ لِي صَدْرِي وَوَضَعَ عَنِّي وِزْرِي وَرَفَعَ لِي ذِكْرِي وَجَعَلَ لِي فَاتِحًا وَخَاتِمًا yeah, very important then. Huh? That uh, praise be to Allah that He has expanded my chest. Alam nashrah sadra. And that He has placed upon me wizardry and this wisdom. Ali dhikri. And that He has raised my remembrance. Warafa'na laka dhikra. Wa ja'alani. And praise be to Allah that He has made me fatihan, a conqueror. Wa khatiman. And He has made me the last and final prophet of Allah. Allah. Or this salah that the Prophet Sallallahu leads in Masjid Al-Aqsa, the salah of the Anbiya, and this majlis which is the greatest majlis to have ever taken place. Ajkal did Peer Sahib come to our house, very khushi on the air. Ona chaita, Peer Sadiq, Murshid Kamil comes to our house, very khushi on the air. Here, or peace Sahib comes to our masjid. Huzur Ghazi Millet come here. Huzur Sheikh Al Islam come here. Everyone's happy. People flock from far and wide. Majlis ki, what do you call it? Zina to Rona? Should be the case. Ali Rasul, Aulad e Nabi. But here, this is the gathering of the Anbiya and Mursali. This is the gathering of the Prophets and the Messengers. The creme de la creme of Allah's creation. The creme de la creme of Allah's creation. And this gathering which I'm getting to, the point that I want you to drop. This gathering is one of the strongest evidences of Nabi Salatu Islam being Khatamun Nabiyyin. The last and final Prophet of Allah and that no other messenger and Prophet will be sent after him. Tell me, was Mirza Ghulam Qadiyan in that gathering? Huh? Was uh, Musaylima or Musaylama, both pronunciations, was he in that gathering? Huh? Was Al, uh, Al Amsi, are these all false, these false prophets who came Allah, after the Prophet and claimed prophethood, were they in that gathering? No. So this is the gathering which is a proof and evidence of the Khatme Nabuvat of Rasulullah. Yes. Barad. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I am now in extra time. And even my laptop batteries died. Huh? So this gets to that point. Very quickly, let's just finish this off. Yes? Then, uh, as you probably saw on the bottom there, uh, good news for you, I bought my charger. As you saw on the bottom there, Nabi Salaam uh, is presented two things. Uh, one, a vessel of milk, and the other, the vessel of wine. And what does the Prophet choose? A vessel of milk. And Jibreel said, Jibreel said, that uh, you have chosen the natural disposition, uh, the natural fitrah, okay? Then ascension to the heavens, write this down. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meets the Prophet Adam Alayhi Salam in the first heaven. Uh, Jibreel knocks upon the door. It said to him, uh, the angel who is in charge of the first heaven, وَمَنْ مَعَكَ who is with you? Jibreel says, Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa Is then said, Faqad bu'itha ilayhi. That has he been called for? Has he been sent for? Aye, aye. Everyone is waiting. Every angel in the heaven is waiting. Everyone is in uh, intazar mein hai na? They're waiting, knowing uh, that the arrival of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to uh, adorn the heavens is imminent. Uh, and then Jibreel said, Qad bu'itha ilayhi, yes, uh, he has been called for. And then, wa uh, lana, the, the gate, the first gate is open. And Nabi Salaam meet uh, the uh, Prophet Adam al Islam in the first heaven. And in the second heaven, uh, the Prophet Yahya and the Prophet Isa, the Sunnah Maryam. And this gives us another point of our aqidah. And we don't believe what the Christians believe, that Isa Islam died or was killed on the cross. No. Rather, we as Muslims believe that Allah Almighty raised Isa Islam to the second heaven. And toward the end of times, uh, 
towards the end of time, better way of saying it, towards the end of time, uh, when Imam Mahdi will be preparing uh, his army to fight against Dajjal, who will descend upon the eastern minaret of the Grand Masjid in Damascus? Sayyidina Isa Islam, wearing yellow clothing, and he will descend upon the two wings of the angels, and Isa Islam will live on the earth. They will defeat Dajjal at a place called Lud and Baqaida. They will live on the earth and they will rule the Muslims, and they will be there when Ya'juj and Ma'juj will cause havoc and massacre upon the earth and Isa Islam will marry and Isa Islam will have children and Isa Islam will go to Madina Tul Manawara and he'll present himself in the Barga of Nabi Islam and Isa Islam when he will give salam to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Nabi Islam will give jawab to him as well and Isa Islam will return as an Ummati not as a Nabi he will abide by the Sharia and the Quran of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yes, he will not return as a Nabi. This is a lengthier discussion as well. Barhal, third heaven, uh, Sayyidina Yusuf al-Islam. Fourth heaven, Sayyidina Idris al-Islam. Fifth heaven, Sayyidina Harun al-Islam. Sixth heaven, Musa al-Islam. Let's see who's clever from you, young ones. Huh? Go on, Ismail, redeem yourself. Huh? How many times has the Prophet ﷺ now met Musa al-Islam on this one night? You listen to the whispers of the Shia who <laughs> come in the form of humans as well, huh? and they've influenced you. Bus Conference League now, Conference League. You've gone from Champions League to Championship now, Conference League. Huh? Anyway, it's not two, it's three. First was when? In the grave. Second was when? In Masjid Al-Aqsa, Musa Islam was part of the prayer. He's part of the prophets. And our third time is in the sixth heaven. A pivotal uh, figure uh, in uh, this whole uh, miraculous night journey. Yes. And the seventh heaven, Bayt al mamur where the heavenly Kaaba is. Nabi Islam meets the Prophet Ibrahim Al-Islam, his Jaddi Amjad. Yes. Okay. So seven heavens. Then the third state, Al Iraj, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taken to the furthest boundary, Al Sidratul Muntaha. Sidratul Muntaha. And this is also the utmost limit of Jibreel, Jibreel Alayhi Salaam. Alama Ismail Haqqi in their tafsir, Ruh al Bayan mentioned this. Under the ayat, Subhanallah, the Asrabi Abdihi ila akhir. Jibrail says that even if uh, one finger goes beyond this point, I will burn and perish. Yes? So where the intiha of Jibrail is, the ibtida of Rasulullah. And Allah Almighty wanted the whole of Kainat to know that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi isn't reliant upon Jibrail. Rather, Jibrail is reliant upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi asks Jibrail, then what do you want me to ask Allah on your behalf? And what does Jibrail say? Jibrail says, ask Allah that when your ummatis are entering into Jannah, that I will lay down my wing for them to walk upon. I will lay down my wing for them to walk upon. 600 wings of Jibrail in his original form. Yes. Allah. And then the close proximity between Allah and His Rasul Conversation uh, takes place, secrets are revealed, gifts are exchanged. Three main gifts, the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Yes. And 50 prayers, which eventually became five. Through whose wasila? Musa Yes. Those who do inkar of tawassul and istighatha uh, should read 50. Simple. You don't accept wasila, but you'll read five a day. Huh? And you'll go around do it with your bora pistra. And you'll tell people, ji, panch paro, panch paro, read your salah, read your salah. 
but you deny tawassul and you deny uh, seeking assistance and madad and help and intermediary, taking intermediary of the prophets. So you read 50. Uh, here, Musa Islam, as I told you, uh, how many years before the Prophet ﷺ did Musa Islam come? 2,000 years. Yes. So Nabi Islam is taking uh, the help and the medium of someone who is, <coughs> in magic commas, dead. Uh, where is your Batil Aqidah coming from? Yes. This is the Aqidah of the Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'at. That taking assistance and help and madad and tawassul and wasila of the Anbiya Musaleen, this is in reality the way of the Prophets themselves. Like in the Quran, when Yaqub al Islam loses his eyesight, uh, what does Yusuf al Islam send through his brothers? Uh, Ramadan is close, your manzil should be strong now. Idhabu uh, bi kamisi hadha, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, uh, Allah Ta'ala says that Yusuf Islam said to his brothers, take this shirt of mine, tell our father to place it upon his eyes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, ajib where they take their aqidah from. So first it was uh, 50 prayers. And Musa Islam said what? And your ummah will not be able to cope with 50. Go back, back and ask Allah. Go back and ask Allah to reduce them. 50 became 45, 45 became, how many times did they go back and forth? Nine times. So eventually 50 became five. Still Musa al-Islam said uh, that your ummah will not be able to cope. I have tried and uh, uh, I have uh, uh, done azman or uh, azmash of my own ummah. They will not be able to uh, cope with the five. And how true was Musa al-Islam? How true was Musa al-Islam? That we struggle with five a day today. Yes? So the doctor say what? Five a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, five fruits and five vegetables. I say five a day keeps the shaitan away. Yes? No? They give me days for. <laughs> Come on, man. It's not that bad. Huh? Anyway, five a day keeps shaitan away. Take care. Uh, so ultimately, the gift of salah was given on this night. Or ye yadra ko, another point here. Gallatani mukniya. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is how old now? 52, yes? One year before migration. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 52 years old. How many years into prophethood? 12. 12. And this is the first of the pillars, aside from shahada, practical pillars. This is the first of the pillars to make, be made obligatory upon the Sahaba. 12 years. Tell me, what was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing for 12 years? And the answer is simple. The Prophet ﷺ was rectifying the beliefs and the iqad of the people. Which tells you and me that aqidah is more important than a'mal. Alhamdulillah, bakshish on the day of Qiyamah, our forgiveness from Allah on the day of judgment will not be on our salah. Will not be because of our siyam. Will not be because of the charity, sadaqat and khairat and lillah that we gave. If we are going to be forgiven on the day of judgment, it's going to be through the mercy of Rasulullah That when Nabi Islam will open his bazuwe rahmat wa shafa'at, no doubt that will be for the whole ummah. Yes, ajle unki pana. Allah says this. And now is the time to seek help and assistance from the Prophet. Tomorrow you'll have no choice but to accept his maqam of martaba. When he's raised, raised to maqam of Mahmood, you'll have no choice but to accept his maqam of martaba. So isn't it better today you build your connection with him? And then the special mercy. This is what I'm talking about. Special mercy for the ummah. Uh, that all of the prophets they did their supplications, their du'as in the dunya, like Nur Islam made the du'a. Oh Allah, send down the floods, destroy my people, the nation who rejected me. But Allah Almighty's beloved Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam, yani Huzu Jani Jana Rasul Akram sallallahu alaihi wasallam, has reserved his supplication, his du'a, special du'a for the day of judgment. Uh, 
Allah Almighty said, you can take half. Half of your ummah goes into Jannah. Everybody start to stop sitting down. Until every single one of them are not out of the fires of Jahannam. Everybody start to stop said, I will not rest. Uh, this is that special mercy for the ummah. Special mercy for the ummah. Take care. A lot more can be mentioned. He witnessed punishments on, these, uh, on this night as well. On another occasion, inshallah. How the morning after the night before, Nabi uh, Sattu Islam come back, uh, comes back and reports to the Quraysh. Yes, reports to the Quraysh. Which part of the journey did he mention? Only the first part. Nabi Sattu Islam said to the Quraysh, Abu Jahl and the like, uh, and the likes, that I made this journey from Mecca to Jerusalem, Jerusalem back to Mecca in one night. They said, impossible, impossible. Uh, they said, a caravan is coming. They will tell us how Jerusalem is. You describe to us how Jerusalem is. Masjid al-Aqsa is. The minar and the uh, mimbar and so on and so forth. So by Allah's qudra uh, and a mu'jizah of the Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi Jerusalem al-Qudsu al-Sharif al-Masjid al-Aqsa appears in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uh, And point by point, feature by feature, uh, he mentions every single detail in relation to al-Masjid al-Aqsa. Then what does Abu Jahl do? Abu Jahl goes to Yari Ghar, Yari Mazar, Afdal al-Bashar Ba'd al-Anbiya, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiyallahu ta'ala. This is the day, on the 27th of Rajab, that Abu Bakr becomes a Siddiq al-Akbar. Abu Bakr becomes a Siddiq al-Akbar. Yes? And this is something that is verified. Verified by Sayyidina Ali Murtaza himself. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza himself says, that ultimately, uh, Imam Tabarani mentions this. That Sayyidina Ali would take oath. He would take oath. And he would say that Allah revealed the name of Abu Bakr as a Siddiq from the heavens. Uh, that this one is greater than that one. Who are we to say which Sahabi is greater than the other? Uh, all of the Sahaba are Azim. But there is no doubt that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq is Afqal al-Bashar ba'd al-Anbiya. Afqal al-Khalq ba'd al-Rusul. And he's the greatest from amongst the Sahaba. Sayyidina Ali Murtaza himself would say this. That on this day, that morning after the night before, Allah revealed from the heavens the title al-Siddiq for Abu Bakr. Huh? And at the beginning of this name, occurred on the morning of the ascension. Yani Imam Bayhaqi does not of this. Imam Zarqani mentioned this in his Shara Zarqani, volume number one, page number 445. Yes? So the last point that I'll mention, and we'll come back to the journey of migration next month, inshallah. Yes? Remind me that's where we'll pick it up from and bring these notes with you. And we'll do the first year and the second year, the Battle of Badr, all of this uh, next time, inshallah. But now we're going to be here a while. My last jumla is this. Yes? Who came to Abu Bakr? Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl says that your prophet, your prophet, claims that we've been to Jerusalem and back in one night. Yes? Today people look for evidence. And they said that this chain is weak, this narrator is weak, this ravi is weak. Da'if narration, weak narration. Tell me, here, did Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq look at who was narrating? Who's narrating here? The Pharaoh of the Ummah of the Prophet Abu Jahl. He is narrating that your Prophet, yani Sayyiduna Abu Bakr hasn't heard from Nabi Rasulullah himself. He is hearing from Abu Jahl. Staunch enemy of Islam. Ra'isul kafirin. Yani the leader of the kuffar. Huh? Ra'isul mushrikeen. The leader of the mushrikeen. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq didn't look at who is saying it. Rather he looked at and he heard what is being said. Abu Jahl says what? Huh? That your prophet claims to have been to Jerusalem and back in one night. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said that if my beloved prophet was to say that he has been through the heavens and met Allah as well, I will accept this as well. That's when he became a Siddiq al Akbar. So we know that this coming week now marks the annual uh, anniversary of the passing of Yare Ghar, Yare Mazar. It would have been befitting to go through the migration story and how he made sacrifice for the Prophet. As they were making their way towards the, uh, the cave of Thawr. 
Sometimes he would stand in front of the Prophet sallallahu Sometimes behind, sometimes to the right, sometimes. Nabi Salatu Salaam says, Ya Abu Bakr, oh Abu Bakr, what is it that you're doing? Majra kya hai? Remember, there was a plot to assassinate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Ali takes Nabi Salatu Salaam's place in the bed of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Salatu Salaam covers Sayyidina Ali and Murtaza with his kali kamli, his blessed mantle and his chadar mubarak. And Nabi Salatu Salaam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, uh, they make their way uh, towards the cave of Thawr. Nabi Salatu Salaam says, and all of Makkah is looking for them. Nabi Salatu Salaam says, oh Abu Bakr, what are you doing? Sometimes you are in front of me, sometimes you are behind, sometimes to my right or left. Majra kya hai? Jawab mein sabak hai. Siddiq Akbar said, Ya Rasulullah, when I fear that the enemy will attack you from in front, I stand in front of you. So I will be the first to take their arrows. When I fear that they will attack you from behind, I stand behind you in order to defend you. So I'll be the first to take their arrows. If I fear that they're going to attack you on the right or left, then I stand on your right and left so that I'll be the first to take the arrows and defend you, Ya Rasulullah. And then he, ca he carried the Prophet Sallallahu Siddiq Akbar is 51. Nabi is 53. He carried the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on his blessed back. Or I'm uh, not an average person, normal person. The Noor of Nabuwat and the Noor of Risalat as well. The light of prophethood and messengership he carries upon his blessed back. And ulama said this in itself is a dalil. Because when Fateh Makkah, huh? Nabi Salaam Salaam couldn't reach to that idol, Sayyidina Ali says what? Ya Rasulullah, allow me to stand upon your shoulders so that I can reach to that idol. Nabi Salaam Salaam said no. But on this occasion, on the occasion of the migration, the hijrah, huh? Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq carries the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then what? Then they get to the entrance of the cave. Siddiqui Akbar says, Ya Rasulullah, give me permission. Allow me to enter the cave to see whether it is safe and clean for you to enter. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq enters on the permission given to him by the Prophet Sallallahu One by one, he begins to fill the holes with his kameez. Huh? Contextualize all of this. Hot, scorching Arab sun over their heads, making this journey from Makkah Sharif to Medina Sharif. Kamu Pesh, around 380 kilometers. Those of you who have been will know, uh, take several hours by coach. They had their camels, they were walking and making that journey. Uh, no other pieces of clothing, but he sacrifices his clothing for who? For Rasulullah One by one he fills all of the holes. One hole remains. He takes his blessed heel and he fills that hole with his blessed heel. Then he says to the Prophet Ya Rasulullah, now it is safe for you to enter. And when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam enters, Siddiqui Akbar says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, you must be tired, why don't you rest? Aye, aye, aye. You must be tired, who carried who? Sayyidina Abu Bakr carried the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And what does the Ghulam say? Ghulam says, Ya Rasulullah, you must be tired, why don't you rest? You must be tired, why don't you rest? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam begin to rest. And then we know that a snake came and bit the uh, with Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq on the heel, that snake ulama right waited thousand, uh, thousands of years, waited thousands of years just to have a glance of the Wadduha Chera of Rasulullah. Uh, thousands of years that snake waited to see the Wadduha Chera of Rasulullah. And the one who was blocking him from seeing the blessed. What do Hachera of Nabi Salatu Salam, Walayl Zulfa of Rasul Akbar was the heel of Siddiqui Akbar. Siddiqui Akbar is bitten by a snake and the pain is such that he controls himself, he controls himself, but the pain becomes unbearable. Tears begin to roll down his blessed cheek huh? and then one of them tears land upon the blessed cheek of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Salatu Salam awakened from their sleep. They say, Ya Abba Bakr, what's wrong? May apne alfaz with me. What's wrong? Majra kya hai? Why are you crying? Siddiqui Akbar didn't say, Ya Rasulullah, don't worry, I'm going to call an ambulance. Aaj kal ka jira molbi aura. This is the difference between a Sahabi and a Wahhabi. You don't need to add this bit out. Huh? This is the difference between a Sahabi and a Wahhabi. Sahabi will say, huh? Kaun deta hai dene ko mucha hiye? Dene wala hai sacha hamara nabi. And Wahhabi will say, it doesn't matter. He didn't know what was behind the wall. And he didn't know this. Hamare jaise hai, ye hai, wo hai. Huh? 
this is the difference between Sahabi and Wahhabi. Uh, Siddiqui Akbar, Afbarul Bashar Bahdul Anbiya. He says, Ya Rasulullah, snake has bitten me. Nabi Nisatul Islam does what? Takes his blessed saliva, places it on that area where Siddiqui Akbar has been bitten through the blessings of the blessed saliva of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That pain that Siddiqui Akbar was suffering, that pain is removed. That pain is removed. Hamare jaisi hai. In my saliva there is germ and bacteria. You go to somebody who's been bitten by a snake. You take your saliva and place it. Next month gonna say, Pagal ya. You're taking your saliva, putting it on my pain? And no. This is why he's not like you and me. We're not saying he's Huda, Mahadullah. This is why Imam Busiri says what? Don't say that the Prophet ﷺ is God. Don't say that he's the son of God. But anything other than this, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ دِكْنَا You will never be able to do justice to his maqam or martaba. This is why the ummah is suffering today. Because we've not understood the maqam of Rasulullah Wasallam. We've not drowned ourselves in the ishq and ghulami of Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. If you want to see someone who was absorbed in the ishq and mahabbat and the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Wasallam, look no further than Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu For three days and three nights they were in Ghari Thaw. And the Prisna Tirmizi Sharif Kiribat. And I remember my Shaykh Tariqat and Ibla Mufti Hassan Raza Sahib. Damat per Katumar Ali Awal Kutsi and Bradford. One of the relations they mentioned when I was uh, these lots age. They go for them three days and three nights. Nabi Islam transferred everything from his Sina to the Sina of Siddiq Akbar. So much so that when they arrive in Medina, Sina to Medina, huh? when they arrive in Medina to Munawwara, the people of Medina, the Ansar, they cannot tell the difference who is the Mola and who is the Gula. Who is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and who is Abu Bakr Siddiq? Such was the manifestation of the Noor on the face of Siddiqi Akbar. The Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq had to stand with a cloth over the blessed head of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he told the people of Medina, Hada Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hada Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the Messenger of Allah. This is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today we have people who insult Siddiqui Akbar. Somebody swears at your father, somebody swears at your mother, you will not comprehend this. And you will not comprehend this. And today people swear at the Sahaba, people swear at the Ahlul Bayt Yadhar, people do Gustafi against Rasul Akram, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And then if somebody speaks out of that, Imam Sahib, we narmi ki baat karo. Imam Sahib, itne sakht bhi na ho. Why? The honor of your father and mother is more to you than the honor of the Sahaba and that of Siddiqui Akbar. The honor of your mother and father, your children is more to you than Hassanayn Karimayn. The honor of your children and your parents is more to you than the honor of Rasulullah What's the purpose of our existence? Imam Malik writes it and Qadi Yazuz Nakhil of it here in Ash-Shifa Sharif. That if someone dishonors the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam, the whole of Kainat should be in shame. That if nobody speaks up in order to defend the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the whole of Kainat should be in shame. And nobody has the right to live. This is the fatwa of Imam Malik bin Anas. And today they brought cartoons depicting our Prophet as a terrorist. Today they make films against the Prophet Sallallahu depicting him as a pedophile Ma'adullah. Today they, they make competitions that who can make a cartoon depicting the Prophet Sallallahu Today they criticize our Sahaba. Today they criticize uh, the Ahlul Bayt Today they have, uh, they have days where they burn the Quran and you think we're just going to sit there? We're just more interested in bas jama'an wa ma'an wa addada. I'm sorry to say and use this tone of language. But enough is enough. The Muslim ummah is suffering because we don't understand. We don't understand the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And our love is with the dunya. Our love is not with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And if you make this claim, I'm sorry to say, ulama karam write this. Shaykh Abdul Haq Muhaddi said, then he writes this. That the one who claims to love the Prophet وسلم, but he doesn't prove this love uh, through visible signs, through external signs, then that person in his claim is a munafiq, he's a hypocrite. Huh? We have no right to live if the honor of the Prophet وسلم, uh, is under attack. We have no right to live if the honor of the Sahaba is under attack. Huh? The Ummah needs to wake up and realize this.
बहरहाल ये थोड़ा परास ही ना आई जस्ट हैव टू टेक इट आउट इट्स बीन अ सिंस वी हैड दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड दीज आर नॉट जस्ट एक्सप्लोसिव जज्बाती जुमले नाउ ये हकीकत है एंड वी माइट नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस टुडे बट टुमारो व्हेन वी आर 6 फीट अंडर एंड नबी सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम व्हाट टू हैव चेरा विल बी ब्रॉट इन फ्रंट ऑफ अस एंड मुनकर अन नकीर विल से मा कुनता तकूल फी हाज रजुल द व्हाट डू यू से अबाउट दिस मैन then we will remember ha huh, there was an imam sahab who used to say this our ulama used to remind us huzur ghazi e millat al shaykh ul islam used to tell us but by then it be too late ha huh? bukhari sharif ke alfaz kitab ul janaiz the munafiqun and the mushri uh, the, the kafir they will say la hadri la hadri i don't know who he is i don't know who he is i just said what the people said don't follow huh, what the people said look for the truth yourself and if you want to understand the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's maqam wa martaba first understand the maqam wa martaba of sayyidina abu bakr siddiq first understand the maqam wa martaba of sayyidina umar al-farooq sayyidina uthman al-ghani sayyidina ali al-murtaza understand the maqam wa martaba of the sahaba ikram ashabi kan-nujum bi ayyihim iqtadaytum ihtadaytum nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said my companions are like the stars whichever one of them you follow you shall be guided And today we have huh, sheep in wolves clothing attacking Sayyidina Ali Muawiyah radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu attacking the Ahlul Bayt at Ha huh, we have certain doctors on TV who go and huh, praise Yazid and say ma'adallah Imam Hussein was a baghi and he was a rebel for going to Karbala and the people praise these people that je gal karo hon hi nahi Imam sahab bol sakht ni galla karne na koi sakhti nahi Islam vich koi sakhti nahi So for the Isa al Thawab of Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and all of our marhumi marhumat who have left this dunya if each and every one of us can recite surah al Fatiha once surah al Ikhlas three times over the last few days you might say Imam Sahib you covered the migration story yeah and there was one narration I really wanted to cover and it's in your notes you can read it and then we we'll come to it uh, next month inshallah we we'll start from that the narration of Ummi Ma'bad you may have heard of the name ha huh? The narration of Ummi Ma'bad is on page 24, and how she describes the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Ali bin the uh, Yom <coughs> the passing of Sayyid Abu Bakr Siddiq which is 22nd of Jamadul Akhir is on uh, Wednesday or Thursday and 22nd so make every effort to at least uh, read his biography or read something and present a reward to them yare ghar yare mazar ha huh? and for am i karam right ye bhi sirat hai na that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had no saya saya means what shadow light upon light again nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam had no shadow but if you were to say his uh, he had a shadow then his shadow is sayyidina abu bakr siddiq subhanallah never left the side of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes آمين الله وصلى على سيدنا ونبينا وشفينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وزدنا حكما والحمد لله على كل حال ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ربنا اغفر لنا ولاخواننا الذين سبقونا بالايمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين امنوا ربنا انك رؤوف رحيم اللهم بارك لنا في امورنا اللهم بارك لنا في اولادنا اللهم بارك لنا في بيوتنا اللهم بارك لنا في اموالنا ورزقنا وطعامنا وشرابنا بوسيله سيد الابرار يا الله يا رحمان يا رحيم اكسب ذس محفل مجلس يا بارك الله ان ذس غادرين وي سات فور ذا لاست 2 اورز my brothers my sisters my elders my youngsters who have sat here patiently listening studying aspects of the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in particular waqi al isra wal miraj what happened in the year of grief and sorrow the social and economic boycott against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
And towards the end, we touched upon Shani Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. All that which you have mentioned, Ya Allah, all that which you have participated in, accept it in your bargah. Accept it in your bargah. Make it a means of our kafara in the akhirah. A means of our najat in the akhirah. Ya Allah, we ask of you, allow us to have true pechan of the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allow us to understand the rank and the status of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allow us to understand the rank and the status of the Sahaba ikram ahlul bayt ya tha awliyai kamilin. Ya Allah, we need dua, whatever we have recited from the Quran, accept this recitation in your barqa. And this gathering and all that which we have participated in, bil khusus ayat in qaddasat that we have recited, let the reward of this first and foremost, hadiyatan tawfatan, aqidatan, muhabbatan, adaban be conveyed to the barqa, the court of huzu jane jana, taj Dari Medina, Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, then through the Wasila and Vasta of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let the reward be conveyed to all of the Anbiya Mursaleen. So Habay Karam Ahlul Bayt Yatha. Bil khusus, Ya Allah, let the reward be conveyed uh, to Afdalul Bashar Ba'd Al-Anbiya, Afdalul Khalq Ba'd Al-Rusul, uh, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq Radiyallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Ya Allah, we ask of you, let the reward of this gathering and bil khusus, the recitation of the Quran that we've done, be conveyed to their barqa. Continuously raise their darajat in the Akhirah. Allow us to benefit from their views of barakah. Mm -hmm. Allow us to make the same level of sacrifices that they made for deen islam mm -hmm. He sacrificed his mal for the deen. He sacrificed his jaan for the deen. He sacrificed his olad for the deen. Mm -hmm. He is that individual who epitomizes, epitomizes fanafir rasul. Ya Allah, we ask of you, allow us to receive one uh, portion, one hissa of that love that he had for Rasulullah mm -hmm. Ya Allah, we ask of you, that allow us to follow in their footsteps. Let the reward of this gathering be conveyed to all of the Azwaj Mutaharat. Validen Kariman or Ladi Park of Rasul Akram Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, let the reward of this gathering be conveyed to Shuhudai Badr, Shuhudai Khud, Shuhudai Karbobala. Bil khusus all of the Awliya, Sufiya, Ulama. Mujtahideen, Mufasiri, Muhaddithin, Aymai Tariqat, Aymai Shariat of the Ahli Sunnah, Tiwal Jamaat. Bil khusus through their for use of Barakah. Let the reward of this gathering be conveyed to all of our Marhumin Marhumat who have left this dunya uh, from the time of Adam Islam till today, grandparents, great-grandparents, aunties and uncle parents, young and old who have left this dunya, Ya Allah, we make dua for them all, raise their darajat in the akhirah. Bil khusus mere walad karami ke liye dua, Ya Allah, raise his darajat in the akhirah. Give him the highest maqam in Jannatul Firdaus. Give him the company of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in Jannatul Firdaus. Ya Allah, we make dua, forgive us for our kabair and sagai gunas. Gunaho ki adat chura mere mawla. Hame nek insan bana mere mawla. Those who have facilitated this class, give them ajar or jazai in the dunya, ajar or jazai in the akhirah. Those who have regularly attended this class give them ajr or jazai in the dunya ajr or jazai in the akhirah give us all happiness and success in the dunya happiness and success in the akhirah we make dua for our parents who are alive give them long and healthy lives rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani sagira our validen who have left this dunya one of them or both of them raised the darajat in the akhirah we make dua for our children keep them protected from the evils and vices of society in particular what they're going to be teaching in the schools in the near future ya Allah RSE LGBT uh, ABC whatever they want to be teaching ya Allah protect our children from these evils. Protect our children from these vices of society. Ya Allah, keep us all firm upon the surat al mustaqim Allow us to truly know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so that we can truly love him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make our jina marna for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Putna bana for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Diyare ishq mein apna maqam paida kar. Ki Muhammad se wafa tu ne to hum tere hai. Ya Allah, we ask of you, make us true ghulams of Rasulullah sallallahi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi. محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين رحمتك